Ollante Tabo, probably one of the most visually perplexing sites within Peru, claimed to be that of the Incas. During the Inca Empire, Ollante Tabo was the royal estate of Emperor Pacacuti, according to academia. When he conquered the region, he built the town and the ceremonial center within. It is such an impressive, perfectly placed strategic structure that, at the time of the Spanish conquest, it served as a stronghold for Manco Inco Yupanqui, leader of the Inca resistance. Nowadays, the area is called the Sacred Valley of the Incas and is an important tourist attraction. However, as mentioned many times on our channel, how could a civilization create such astonishing architecture at such an early time within known history? Furthermore, how did they create some of these sites? What purpose could they have served? Some of the ruins that can be found in Peru, and in particular, Ollante Tambo, you cannot help but wonder if, for example, the giant stairs carved into the hillside were intended for human use, then why create them to such enormous scales? According to the history books, around the mid-15th century, the Incan emperor Pacacuti conquered Ollante Tambo, including the surrounding region all were incorporated into his personal estate. The emperor then claims to have rebuilt the town with sumptuous constructions and undertook extensive harassing and masterfully irrigating the Urubamba Valley, notably without any prior knowledge of these techniques known of. The main settlement at Ollante Tambo has an orthogonal layout with four longitudinal streets crossed by seven parallel streets. At the center of this grid is a large plaza that was open to the east and surrounded by halls and other town blocks on its other three sides. Buildings in the northern half are more varied in design. Interestingly, the amount of erosion that has occurred over the years has rendered the original plans as hard to establish, perhaps a clue to its true age. Were these giant ledge steps once used by giants, or possibly, had a use similar to the ancient site known as Moray. Moray also claimed to be Incan. This mind-boggling site had an astonishing purpose. It seems the builders of this enormous structure were masters of horticulture. They had somehow figured out that by creating these raised ledges at particular angles to the seasonal winds and sun, slowly acclimatized plants previously not suitable to that climate over many generations. Perhaps this is what Oliente Tambo was used for. Moray is little shared by academia. Indeed, its existence and one's function is difficult to explain with modern paradigms. And although not giants, we feel the site's once use was no less impressive. Sacsayhuaman, meaning Royal Eagle, is a fortress temple complex which lies at the northern edge of the once great Incan capital of Peru, still known today as Cusco. Apparently constructed during the reign of Pacacuti between 1438 and 1471 AD, according to academia, its massive, well-built walls remain a testimony not only to Incan power, but also to their skills of architecture and their approach of blending their monumental structures harmoniously with the natural landscape. The Sacsayhuaman site was so well built in fact, it is still used today for reenactments of Inca-inspired ceremonies. With some of the biggest blocks to be found within ancient ruins anywhere on Earth, it's important to remember just how these ancient civilizations managed to move these stones having never actually thought to record such techniques within engravings or writings of any kind, remains a mystery. Blocks many tons in weight placed together with such precision, no mortar was ever used, yet the site remains intact, like a giant's dry stone wall. Enormous random-shaped stones were apparently effortlessly stacked neatly together, or one on top of another, forming the amazing walls we see today. Who built Saxa Heuermann? Was it really the Incas? If so, how did they manage it? Like all other ancient sites upon Earth, archaeological finds are one of the main driving factors behind dating such relics. These investigations will often look for specific artifact types. These objects, known to have places within studied history, are often used to establish a date given. 
This by no way means that the date is accurate, or indeed the artifacts from a far different type of culture from a very different time in history are not missed, or more often than not, ignored. The giant blocks interlocked and sloped to maximize their resistance to earthquake damage, a construction feature somehow understood over 500 years ago. Time has proved its efficiency. Earthquakes have done remarkably little damage to the structures in Peru over the years, many still in their apparently abandoned state, and the Sacsayhuaman is no exception. Did the Incas really build Sacsayhuaman, Machu Picchu, etc.? Or, like we have postulated regarding the Great Sphinx and the Giza Plateau, was the Incan Empire a mere re-inhabitation of an extraordinarily well-built ancient ruin, left by a far more advanced, yet far more ancient civilization? Perhaps one day, Peru will reveal its ancient secrets. Found everywhere on Earth, and even dotting some of the most remote tropical islands, these Cyclopean ruins still perplex us to this day. Many of the ancient Cyclopean ruins that can be found within developed areas have often been draped with modern architecture. Many suspect that this is often done in an attempt to conceal the true nature of these sites. Italy is a particularly good example of a country drenched in Cyclopean architecture yet chooses to overlook such wonders in favor of modern development. Scattered throughout ancient Latinium, and yet again, coincidentally, placed at the location of a later flourishing civilization, and actually the first real modern world superpower, Rome, are ruins undoubtedly left by an as yet not publicly disclosed or studied branch of ancient beings who were capable of feats we are yet to unravel. Many classical writers and historians, including Homer, Hesiod, Plutarch, Thuclides, and Diodorus Siculus, among others, posited the idea that the Cyclopean ruins of Italy and others within Europe were erected by this now extinct Cyclopean race. And we seemingly continue to carry this torch. For, to heavily research, not only these particular areas of ancient architecture, but the many individuals who have made remarkable discoveries over the years, along with reels of newspaper archives with an interest in these particular finds, and also the suspected individuals tasked with the possible concealment of such. The proposition of an unknown ancient race of controversial beings, possibly much larger than modern humans, having once existed on our planet, has become overwhelming. Why are ancient ruins, seemingly built by a race of giants, actually named after giants? A name with origins placed far within our distant past. Did an ancient race of giants once build the countless unexplained ruins found on virtually every continent? We find the evidence within some areas to suggest such overwhelming. It is now an undeniable reality that our planet's climate is changing. The pollution we, as a species, are creating atmospherically and environmentally is undeniable. And although many are oblivious to this effect, or sadly they simply don't care, there are countless others who are passionately invested in cultivation, salvaging, and repairing the damaged parts of our planet's habitats. Iceland, in particular, is taking on the climate shift in their country by using a method left by a lost civilization. Having minimal scattered and declining forest habitats in the country, top horticultural specialists are now seemingly mimicking a technique which, thanks to heavy historical research, is a method rediscovered for its origins being Peru, possibly during the polygonal era. And then the climate changes. The winters have become milder. Many of the trees that we planted in the 1950s, especially Siberian larch, are literally dying after several decades of being reasonably good. The genetics of forest trees are important. These are all things that are genetically determined in the trees. And through the years, we've found the species that we can use, and now we're selecting individuals that are best adapted bringing them together in a seed orchard and 
using their offspring in afforestation? Known as moray, its use was to acclimatize and then grow forests in places that the original parent plant species would have simply failed in. As stated by the lead directors of the project, quote, we are using a technique to regrow forests for the first time in over a thousand years, end quote. Referring to the supposed Incan site, Moray, a site in which we ourselves established its purpose via our own research. An enormous, terraced garden which practiced strain selection and phenotyping. It consisted of growing out many plants, selecting plants with highest vigor, thus better established for said environment, raising their altitude with every selected generation, until, eventually, they could grow sea-level herbs, fruits, trees, and all other types of plants high above the clouds. We find the fact that Iceland is finally recreating intact, unbroken forest ecosystems with a prehistoric technique which, if applied in other areas of the planet experiencing decline in ecosystems with the utilization of modern technologies, could have immense potential. A truly genius creation. Its potential, if we apply our modern technologies to the ancient practice unraveled as the purpose for Moray is enormous. Growing food in otherwise once inhospitable countries, for example, Seeds created through exhaustive selective crossbreeding could create staple food crops, impervious to drought, or with the ability to drive a core into groundwater, which their ancestors could not. Moray not only proved the astonishing knowledge and ability of its creators, but also the potential in the incredible adaptability of plants over just a few generations, something we are again finally utilizing. Could these ancient ruins' ultimate legacy be that of the colonization of Mars? It is a resurrected ancient technology we have perused and mentioned for many years. And finally, the over 1,000-year-old masterpiece is now once again rebuilding forests. We undoubtedly find this highly compelling.